Uh, so I've been in Hebrews 10 a little bit. The Lord's had me in Hebrews 10. And I just wanna offer some brief words about the gospel, about the good news, and what it is that we do here every Sunday and all throughout the week. Hebrews 10, verse 19, this is what it says. It says, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain, which is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God. Now that's, that's in the middle of a sentence. We'll get to the rest of it in just a second. Um, has anyone ever been to Altson Stadium? Put your hands in the air if you've been to Austin. Yeah. Do you remember what it was like your first time you went to Altson? Does anyone? Maybe you were a kid the first time you went to Altson and you just walk into this massive dome where there's so much history uh, you probably, if you were a child, your parents were probably big Ducks fans. And so you've watched games on the television. You've heard about the players from the past. I'm from North Carolina. And in North Carolina, college basketball is, is a little bit bigger than college football. And at least in my household, both of my parents went to UNC Chapel Hill. So we grew up big Tar Heels fans, which was, yeah, lucky for us because they've been very good for a very long time. Um, and I remember being a kid and watching games. And our stadium, where the Tar Heels played basketball, was known as the Dean Dome. The Dean Dome, after our famous coach, Dean Smith. And my dad worked for the YMCA. My mom was a teacher. We didn't have a lot of money, so we didn't get to go to a lot of games. And the ones we did get to go to were your preseason games, the games that really no one wanted to go. And so we went to a few when I was a child, and it was great. I mean, I remember every time that you walked in, you're just stunned. You see all the jerseys hanging in the rafters. It felt like the most holy place is what it felt like as a child. But of course, for anyone who's familiar with Carolina rivalry, there's one game that you definitely want to go to. Who, what is that game? Absolutely. You want to see Duke go to, I'm just kidding. I won't do it again. I won't do it again. <laughs> Fool me once, guys. Fool me once. Um, and we never got to go to a Duke game until I was a uh, middle schooler. And in middle school, there was a guy who was on the board of the YMCA where my dad worked, and he had some tickets to the Carolina Duke game. And so I'll never forget, my dad came home and was like, hey, how do you, what do you feel, what do you think about going to a UNC Duke game? And I'm pretty sure I lost consciousness for a couple <laughs> seconds. Like, are you serious? And I remember we, when we got to go, we had a parking pass that we had, so we got to park closer to the stadium. Because of when we sort of walked in and we met my dad's friend who was on the board, he had one of those lanyards and one of those all access passes, or I don't know exactly what it was, I was a middle schooler, but like he had one, we got to wear one, which allowed us to go in different parts of the, the stadium. We got to go close to the court, see the players warming up. People recognized him. People looked at him and you could tell like security was like, hey, who are these guys? Oh, they, they saw the all access pass. Like, you're good, come on through. And it was incredible. It was an absolutely amazing experience. I can still feel it in my body. The sense of authority that I had, like the sense of, of power, the sense of access because of this guy, because of, he said, hey, they're with me. Now, how much more, when we read in Hebrews, the writer says, therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter, not the Dean Dome, not even Altson Stadium, we have confidence to enter the most holy place, which if you're unfamiliar with Jewish history, for the, the, the people of Israel, for the longest time, they worshiped in the temple. And there was a one temple in Jerusalem and it was marked off. There was parts of the temple that you and I were allowed but there were other parts in the temple that only the priests were allowed. And in the most holy place, which the, the writer's talking about here, only the high priest, not even the lesser priest, not even sort of like, you know, you have a pastoral staff, only the, sort of the, the, the lead pastor could go into the most holy place. And he could only go in there once a year to offer sacrifices for the, all the people. But in Jesus, we learn that's changed. We're told, brothers and sisters, you and I, 
Normal people who don't have access to go to games, especially not Carolina Duke games. We actually have confidence now to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way that has been opened up for us, which is his body. And we have a great high priest over the house of God. In a sense, just like my dad's friend who gave us a lanyard with all access pass and took us all over the stadium, introduced us to people. As people looked at him, it's like, who are you guys? Showed the pass, recognized him, said, oh, you're good. In the same way, guys, you and I, we have full and complete access to the presence of God, which is a big deal because historically that was not the case. Historically, it was the priest who gave you guys access, who gave me access. And the priest had to do a lot of different things to make themselves clean in order to enter the most holy place. But with Jesus Christ, with his body, with his blood that was shed, with his death, we're told that the, the curtain that separated the most holy place from everyone else, that's done, that's gone. You and I now have confidence to enter into the very presence of God. We have the lanyard, the all access pass, which says we belong to Jesus. And therefore, we are allowed complete, uninhibited access to the presence. Therefore, what do we do? And the scripture tells us, so let us draw near. Let us come close. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Which is to say, if we've gone beneath those waters, we get the all access pass. If we've gone beneath those waters, Jesus goes, you belong to me. And if we partake in the body and the blood, it sprinkles our hearts, it reminds us, it reminds us that we don't have to have a guilty conscience anymore. It doesn't matter the week we had, we can come with boldness and confidence into the presence of God who longs for us because of what Jesus has done for us and because of us receiving what Jesus has done for us through baptism and through Holy Communion. We can come, the Father is delighted when we come. Let us draw near with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings and having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. And then it says, and let us hold. Everybody say hold. Let us hold unswervingly, which means don't swerve to the right or the left. Let us hold unswervingly to the faith and the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. Question, did it say that you and I are faithful? No. Let us hold to the reality that we can enter into the presence of God. We can draw near and he wants to meet us. Let us hold to that hope. Let us return to it again and again because he who promised, not us, but he who made the promise is faithful. So I don't know what you're coming in with today. I don't know if, if your conscience is feeling guilty or not. Let me tell you the good news. It is on the basis of Jesus Christ, his love for you, his obedience to the Father, his death and resurrection, and on the basis of our receiving of that through the waters of baptism and coming to the table that we stand here today. That's good news, isn't it? And just so you know, Carolina did beat Duke that game. It was a great night for the kingdom of God. Let's join in the word of prayer. And if you're being baptized, why don't you go ahead and, and make your way on up to the baptismal tank. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that we can enter into the most holy place with a clean conscience, without any fear. We thank you, Lord. And we know and we declare 
that the heart of the Father longs for us to come into his presence. And Lord, if there's anyone in the room who feels like, no, that can't be true. If God knew X, Y, or Z, he wouldn't want me to come to him. I pray in this moment by the power of the Holy Spirit that they would sense the name of Jesus saying, actually, you're wrong. Because of what I've done, you are free as you are to come into the presence of God and have your sins washed away. You don't ever have to be afraid again. Don't turn to the right or the left. Hold, hold to me because I am the, the way, the life, and the truth. And I long, I've opened the door and I long for you to come into my father's house. Lord, for those who are saying yes to you today and they're going under the waters of baptism, I pray, Lord, that the old man and the old woman would stay in those waters. That any parts of them that doesn't believe you, doesn't believe your love and your holiness and your goodness, any parts of them that condemns them, where Satan is held on, would be killed and stay beneath those waters. And when they rise up, they would rise up with confidence and assurance of who you are, of who you are and their place in your family. And for the rest of us, Lord, as we celebrate new brothers and sisters coming into the family, would you remind us of our baptisms? Remind us of those moments when you got a hold of us and remind us again that the door is still open to the most holy place. Even if we feel like we haven't been there in a while, the door is still open and we can come into your presence. Lord, for our friend and for his family that is walking through hard things right now, we wanna extend our spirits and, pl and pray for complete healing in Jesus' name. Complete healing. Jesus, you're a God who heals. So heal body, heal heart, heal mind, bring peace to relationships, settle upon this family. Let them know that you are near them, that you love them, that you are working things for their good. Lord, draw near with the presence of the Holy Spirit. So thank you, Jesus, for the reminder of the access we have. And as we as one church come into your presence through baptism and communion, Lord, let our hearts come alive with that reality. Help us to hold unswervingly to this hope for he who promised is faithful. And all God's people said,